praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are our God and our desire. There is no one else like me. We love you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are our God and our desire. There is no one else, no one else we want. There is no one else we want. Oh, just come on and tell him this morning. I don't have to ask you to do it. There is no one else we want. No one else we crave, no one else we search for, no one else we desire. It is you, only you, only you. We fill this room with our love and our desire. For the King of glory. So many times we come and we want, but all we want today is to say we want you. We love you, Lord. God, who searched us out and sought us out and bled for us and demonstrated the fullness of God in human form to redeem us. Hallelujah. We want you. We want you. Only you. First of all, you. Our first desire is you. Hallelujah. Just open our mouths and praise your name, your holy name. We worship like never before. It's not about who's next to us, it's all about you, God. All about you. 
Jesus. He's the King of kings and the Lord and the majestic one. We hail you. All hail to the King of glory. All hail, majestic one. Majestic, awesome, and beautiful. All hail, majestic and sovereign God. Holy, 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 holy. You are holy. holy. My heart is towards you this morning. My sons and my daughters, as you worship me with your abandonment, as you worship me in spirit and in truth this morning, my sons and daughters, my heart is towards you. My heart is towards you, my people. I the am the I am that I am. I am the ancient of days, and my heart is for you and towards you because out of you will flow rivers of living water this morning. Out of you, my sons and daughters, I will pour my spirit upon you this morning, my daughters, not only for this congregation and for this setting, my daughters, but to go into all the earth, my daughters, and prepare a place, oh, my daughters and my sons for me. My heart is for you this morning. Worship me as you worship me in spirit and in truth this morning, my daughters. I am the king of kings. Worship me as the king. I am the Lord of lords. Worship me as the Lord. I am the ancient of days, the rock, the deliverer, the provider. Worship me from your heart and your spirits this morning, my sons and daughters. My sons and daughters, oh, how I love you. My love is not taken because of where you see yourself. I love you despite of everything that you go through. And I, my arms are extended to you. Just run in. And I will comfort you. Even I want you to meditate upon the things I have said. I have said many things over you. Many promises that you are looking to. But know that I am God. And I will see it come to pass. But meditate upon those things. So that your heart will be merry. So you will know that I have not forgotten you. And even as you cry, I cry with you even as when you may feel that you are lonely I am walking there with you I am your comfort, I am your strength, I am your peace I am your Jehovah Gabor I fight for you every time when you may feel alone I am always there and I love you let my love be the one who takes you through the trials and the tribulations I am the one that will keep you I am the keeper of your soul just lean and rest in me my beloved
other one can say that. You're the only God who conquered death.
could not hold him couldn't I mean just could not he had to submit himself to death just for a few hours hallelujah and he won the victory on our behalf amen oh we give him the praise and the glory what a God that loves us so much can do all of that for us it just, it just causes us to worship Him. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just linger a bit longer as we, as we honor our God. As we touch heaven and heaven touches earth. As we worship the risen King. He alone is worthy. There's only one found worthy. That is Jesus. Only one worthy to be worshipped and adored. Let's worship Him. Hallelujah. There He sits. There He sits. Upon a throne, sustainer of all things, the elders bow, the angels sing their song forevermore. There
Eternal eyes, but our inner eyes, our spiritual eyes to see, to see you, to see your beauty, to see your holiness, to see the wonder of your majesty. Give us a vision of your holiness. May the eyes of our understanding be open, O oh God. And we may have an encounter with you. Hallelujah. Of that only one that's found worthy. Hallelujah, we bless you, God. Lord, we just praise your name. Blessed be your name, O God. There's only one. There is only one. You may be seated as we ask the children to come, please. Thank you for a great job, worship team. All of you. Thank you, band. A tremendous job. We bless God for his goodness. We give God the glory. We give him the honor. So we want the children to come. We want to pray over them. And they'll be released to Children's Church. All right, children, as you come forward, um, 
ask Marcy if she can just get the mic in front of the children. And we pray for the teachers also. Thank you, Mark. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for this another day. A brand new day, God, where you have decided within yourself you are going to give us life and give it more abundantly. So, Father, this morning, even as we come, Father, we bring every child before you. Father, we bring every auntie every parent in this place. Father, we bring everyone before you. And Father God, even as we go off to Junior Church, we pray, oh God, that the atmosphere in Junior Church will be so charged that your children, their spiritual ears, their spiritual eyes, their hearts will be open to what you will say to them today. Father, we pray, oh God, for another blessing upon them, God. And Father, for this entire week, that you will go before them. Father, that you will prepare the way before them, oh God, that as they go through this week, God, that they will be covered. So, Father, we thank you again and again for your life, for health, for strength. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus. Father, we thank you and we give you praise this morning. Father, every child, every child in this place, God, we bless them today, God. And, Father, for those that are listening Father, or watching us, oh God, on, on the web, Father, we pray, oh God, for a blessing upon their lives as well, God. Father, open us up to you today, God, and give us a good day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great time in Children's Church. God bless you, children. God bless you, teachers. Good morning to everyone. and. We declare blessings on you in the name of Jesus. And it's good to have you here with us today. Uh, later on in the service, we will welcome those who are here for the first time. But it's really a joy to have you. We welcome those who are viewing us on our live stream. And we pray that God will bless you today even as you join us in the service, from wherever you are in the world, God bless you, God bless you. Oh, God is so good. Isn't his presence so rich in this place? We thank God for his presence. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord, especially when he can manifest himself in our midst, manifest himself to us. Amen. All right, just before we get into the, to the word of the Lord today, um, we just want you to know, um, in case I forget to mention it later, that um, Abundant Life Assembly, People's Cathedral, and New Dimensions are coming together again for three evenings of services. Um, we look forward for that. It's going to be somewhat different this time. We want to make it um, kind of evangelistic outreach. And I, I should have mentioned it last week. It just slipped my mind, but I don't want to forget. On September the 3rd, the 4th, and the 5th, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, the three churches will be coming together, and we'll be going into the city, into Independence Square, to proclaim Jesus to the nation. Amen? So... Mark those days that dates down September the third, the fourth, the fifth. That will be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, um, and we'll be um, ministering the word of the Lord in the city, declaring Jesus Christ to the nation. So we look forward to this. All right, and we we are part of it, so we all will be down there. Amen. Amen. Really look forward to what God is going to do as Abundant Life, People's Cathedral, and New Dimensions uh, come together again, and we'll be reminding you. All right, we're, we're getting back into our series we started a couple Sundays ago. Last, um, the first Sunday, uh, Minister Allen uh, shared 
as he taught on extreme makeover. And we talk, uh, he laid the foundation as we uh, talk about what a transformed life should look like. Last week, Prophet Dwayne took it a step further and he talked about being transformed to reform. Letting us know that, I'm sorry, letting us know that a transformed life is, is done by God so that we can go out and reform uh, the world. So we want to continue this morning. I'm going to just speak on the theme, the power of a transformed life. Because there's power in transformation. And um, with the help of the Lord this week, today, and maybe next week, uh, to begin to show you why we need to be transformed, where God has taken us, and then we'll, we'll go a step further. Our text, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Let's look at that together. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 to 2. I'm reading from the New King James Version. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 2, can we look at verse 2? Be not conformed to this world. It, it speaks very clearly. And this is a, the, 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 where we want to, a bit of where we want to go today. Romans 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Transformation, true transformation can only come as we ensure that we do not conform to this world. Many people, many people believe that they were saved to go to heaven. And very often we tell people in our, in our witness to them, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that when you die, you will go to be with him in heaven. And that's true. But we, we really don't, but we really also need to tell them what happens between the new birth and going to heaven? That's the life we need to live. We've not just been saved to go to heaven. We've been saved so that God can transform us, so we hear we can go out and reform. But God is at work in us from the time he saves us because he has a plan for us. We have been saved to become like Jesus Christ. That is crucial. That's important. God saved you so that you can begin to look like Christ. That's his plan for your life. So it is not just about going to heaven... But God saved you so that heaven can come into you. And that there can be a, a transformation in your life. So that we can become like Christ. And as we become like Christ, we begin to manifest his character in the earth. We begin to manifest his love. His power, His grace, His glory. We begin to touch lives. 
really and truly, we have been saved to be transformed into the image of Christ. That's it. What God is after is to get you and get me in the image of Christ. And over the next few weeks, we're going to tell you what that really looks like. Where God has taken us. So the process from salvation to death is called transformation. I love at times to, to take some quiet walks in my, in my garden I love nature. I love nature very, very much. And I love to observe the, the many different creatures in my garden. There are a lot of critters there. Uh, you, you see things like, uh, I see things in my garden. I don't see other, other places. Uh, beetles and god horses. Some of you don't even know what that is. Uh, Grasshoppers and butterflies, yeah, butterflies and bees and lizards and caterpillars. And I notice if a lizard goes on a, on a, on a twig, it changes into a kind of brownish beige color. And if it moves on to a green leaf, it changes green. I'm sure you realize that too. But we have also noticed the caterpillar. If it goes on, a, on, a, on a, a, a dry twig, it remains green. But it spends most of its time on the, on the green leaves, just eating and eating, preparing for a change. And it goes through its particular change. And in a few days, it transforms into a beautiful butterfly or moth. The lizard and the caterpillar, both green, intriguing creatures, both change, but one conforms. The lizard conforms because wherever it goes, it adapts, but the caterpillar transforms because it moves into different stages and then, let me use the butterfly because I don't particularly like moths. And in a few days, this beautiful butterfly is just flying about. Both change, but one conforms. Because wherever it goes, it changes into its, its surroundings affect it. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So transformation, what does that mean? It means that we come to a, a place in our relationship with God where we are no longer satisfied with just maintaining the status quo of our salvation. Where we're not content to, to continue day after day, month after month, year after year with the same attitudes and habits and ideas. We decide in our hearts we don't want to remain the same. We know that God wants to change us and that he has the power to change us. And we come to a place where we understand that God accepts us just as we are. But we know that he is willing, he's not willing to leave us as we are. And he wants to change us from the inside out. We understand that God wants to shape and strengthen our character. He wants to clean the junk out of our lives. He wants to rework and rearrange our values and our priorities. He wants to pour in wisdom and give insight and understanding. What God wants to do is to transform us. So the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives is to bring about transformation. It's to take the junk out. 
It's to change the way we think, the way we view things. It's to, to attack our attitudes, our bad attitudes. And to really change them. So God is at work by his spirit trying to transform us. And, and that's why he will not give up. Because he wants us to be more like Christ. And we know right now where we are. We're not close enough, but we're getting there. The Greek word for transformed in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, is metamorpho. It means to change the essential nature of something. To change the essential nature of a thing. To change its appearance. So that's what God is up to. He wants to change the essential nature of you. And he wants to change your appearance, but he's working from the inside out. Because if you change on the outward, and there's no true transformation on the inside, you're just pretending. In fact, God understands that we really, really cannot truly change unless he gets us first on the inside. We can preach sermons on how to behave, how to dress, how to do all of these kind of things, how to speak to people. But if we do not allow the Holy Spirit to be at work on the inside, then we will never truly see change. We might try it for a day, but we're going to come right back to it. Because God, God's plan and God's process is to get us on the inside. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. We cannot truly have transformation unless our minds are renewed. So God is after the mind. He's, he's, he, he's processing us. He's changing our mind. And he's, he wants to renew our minds. Because if he can renew our minds, there's no issue with the outward. If he can renew our minds, there's no issue with attitude. If he can get and renew our minds, there's no issue with the way we talk. There's no issue with the way we dress. There's no issue with anything about us. When he gets us on the inside, we look differently on the outside. So the real way into, into transformation is not just to tell a man or woman, you need to change. Sometimes we don't know how to. Monitors, please. But God knows how to change us. God knows exactly what he's after. Often we see people, and we see a whole, oh, we can give them a whole list of things they need to change. But you see, the beauty about God is that, yeah, he wants the whole to change, but he's after us piece by piece. I'm glad he does that because bit by bit, he's working on us. And the more we submit to him, the more he can change. So Christianity, as far as I'm concerned, is not just church attendance. If it was just church attendance, a lot of people would be saved. Christianity is about daily transformation. Can I say daily? I believe with all of my heart that every time we come together like this, and the word is preached, we spend time in the presence of God worshiping, there is some transformation that is taking place, or must take place. But it depends on how much we give to God. I mean, I felt the change already just being in his presence. Just worshiping him. And then when we hear the word and we live by the word, transformation takes place. So church attendance is about transformation. It's not just coming to church for fellowship or worship or to hear the word of the Lord. And these things are good and necessary. It's about fellowship, it's about worship, it's about hearing the word of God so that our lives can be transformed by the power of God. If that's not happening, if transformation is not taking place, then coming to church, then it will be a social event. If transformation is not taking place, then this life that we live is a mere joke. Because we can have altar calls, we can pray over people's lives, 
We can meet people's spiritual needs and physical needs. And that's good. But when we come together, we come together to allow the Spirit of God to continue the process of change in us. So God wants to fundamentally change everything about you. Let me say it again, just in case you missed that one. God wants to change, let me say it again, God wants to fundamentally change everything about you. I believe with all of my heart that when God is at work in a man and a woman, everything about them changes, even their looks. So being a follower of Jesus means that we keep learning. We keep growing. We keep changing. It's a journey of change. Amen? And the, as the Bible says, we need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And as Apostle Paul wrote about himself in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, and I want to read it from the New Living Translation. Philippians 3, verse 13, verse 12 to 14. Paul says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I keep working toward that day when I will finally be all that Christ Jesus saved me for and wants me to be. No, dear brothers and sisters, I am still not all I should be, but I focus all my energies on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us up to heaven. This was a heart cry of a man who was then in his senior years of ministry. A man who took the world by storm. A man who went through so much for Christ. He went through persecution. He, he did many miracles. Many thousands were turned to Christ. He did a lot of work in many nations and changing hearts. He walked in holiness and righteousness before others. And he pleased God in everything he did. And he had just finished talking about how he counted everything, every earthly thing he had achieved, he counted as loss in order to win Christ. And then he said some important things. I don't mean to say I have already achieved these things. Wow, there's a man that did more than all of us put together in here. And he came to a point in his life, he said, I've not achieved all of this yet. I'm pushing for more change. I'm pushing to be all that Christ wants me to be. Man, if I'd done half that he did, I would think that I arrived. And there are four important things that Paul said that we can, we can take upon ourselves, we can seek to do. Four important things coming out of this passage that we can go after if we are really about transformation. He said that he had not achieved all he wanted to in Christ. Having saved many, having done tremendous miracles, Having traveled the, the world, he said, I have not achieved all I wanted to in Christ. A man or woman who is going after transformation, who wants God to transform their lives, will always say, I have not achieved all that I want to in Christ. There's more. Can you say there's more in Christ? We shall never settle and say, I've seen it all. I know a man one time, I, I spoke to him a lot. 
And he was saying to me, with, with, with so much pride, that's all I can say. I've heard every sermon that there is to hear. Nobody can preach to me anything I have not heard. And I say to myself, well, he's just good for one thing. Heaven. Because if you've heard every sermon and heard everything, what else is there? But the heart cry of a man who's about transformation is, I have not achieved all that I want in Christ. There is more. I want more. I'm going after more. I want him to do more in me. As many souls have, as you saved, as many people have been healed under your ministry, as many hundreds of thousands have, been, uh, have heard your ministry, there should be stillness crying your heart, more God. I want more of you. I want you to do more in me. I've not reached there yet, God, so continue to process me. And the second thing he said, I've not yet arrived. He said, but I keep working. He said, I'm not there yet. I haven't achieved all, first of all. He said, I have not yet arrived. In fact, as far as he was concerned, the only arriving is standing before God. One time he said to those he was writing to, he said, I'm ready now to offer up my life. He said, the desire of my heart is to be with Christ, absent from the body, present with the Lord. He said, however, for your sake, I will remain so that I, there can be some gift found in you. So his heart was, yeah, I can go to be with the Lord because I've done so much, but yet there's so much more work to do. The third thing he said, he said, I keep working hard. He kept working toward the time when he will be all that Christ saved him to be. So I'm saying, he, he wasn't about chilling. A man in his senior years of ministry, I am working hard toward the time when I will be all that Christ wants me to be. Let me read it for you. I don't say, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I keep working toward the day when I will finally be all that Christ saved me for and wants me to be. Are you there yet? Where you all that Christ wants you to be? Me neither. But you see, the passion of our heart should always be God. I'm working hard. Now, he did not say I want Holy Spirit to work hard. His heart cry was not, Holy Spirit work hard on me. He understood that the process of transformation required work on his behalf. Can you say work? Because all the work is not for the Holy Spirit, mind you. There's a role we have to play. All the hard work is not for the Spirit of God. we got to work hard too. That's why Paul said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We have to work hard at change. She so said, I'm working hard toward the time that will be all that Christ saved me to be. Wow. And then the last thing he said, I'm focusing all my energies Check the, 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 the terms he used. I'm focusing all my energies on moving forward in Christ to reach my goal. So he said, No, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm still not all that I should be. You hear? I'm not all that I should be. Can we bring back up the verse? We got it there? No, my brothers and sisters, I am still not all I should be. But I am focusing all my energies on one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies 
ahead. So a man or woman that's about transformation focuses all their energies on moving forward in Christ to reach their goal. And, folk, and, and, and straining forward or focusing all your energies on moving forward means at times, most of the time, all the time, that we must forget the past. If you keep living in the past, you will not be transformed. If you keep focusing on who unfeared you, who talked about you, you get what I'm saying? I know my, my, you keep saying my father didn't treat me well. I never knew who my father was. Come on. If you keep living there, you will never be transformed. And you'll be always bringing forward your past into your present. And you'll never be able to stretch forward to what is glorious, what's ahead of you. The things that God is preparing for you. Yes, your father was never there for you. But you've got a new father now, God. Look forward to what's ahead of you. If you keep living in the past, my, my, mom, my mother unfeared me. She never allowed me to finish school. Oh, but now you're saved. Let God help you and get back to school. You got what I'm saying? We live in the past. We live in the hurts of the past and the things that we never achieved in the past and the things that were taken away from us unfairly in the past. When we are like that, we can never see true transformation. Because we always think that somebody owes us something. I got good news for you. Not even God owes you anything. But I never had a good opportunity. But look at the glorious opportunities you now have in Christ. Nobody ever uh, uh, did anything good for me. Yet the word of God says, how great are my plans for you. If you come, if you walk the shores and try to count the, the sands on the shore, you can never even come close to the plans I have for you because we live in the past. But the man or the woman who's about transformation says, yes, it happened, but it's the past. The man or woman's about transformation. Yes, I was on fear, but now I have a fear. I have fear blessings upon my life now. Forget what's behind you. You will never change if you continue to think about how bad your father was to you and how he never affirmed you and how he was never there for you. All the while, your father in heaven is saying good things over you and you're missing it because you're somewhere where you should not be. And the things that God speaks over your life are there to bring transformation. But you know, Pastor, you don't understand. I had to raise my child alone. Yeah? You couldn't have done it with God's help, man. But I, was, I wasn't saved, but God was still there loving you and helping you. But you don't understand, it was hard for me. Yeah, but if it, God was not there, it would have been death for you. So begin now like Paul. I focus all my energies on what's ahead for me because the greater is ahead. Better things are ahead. More glorious things are ahead of me. The past is the past. Can you say the past is the past? God wants some people in this place, I feel it so strongly, to begin to bury the past. There's some people 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. Every day of your life you're living in the past and you can never see true transformation. You live in what used to be when you have a glorious life now. You live in what you never had when you have it all now. You live in what should have been when God says, come, I have everything laid aside for you. You live in the opportunities you miss when God is saying, come, I've given you a second chance and I'm redeeming the things that you miss for you now, but they're in your future, but you're behind them in your past, and you can never be changed. Listen, God wants you, all of you. The pastor, you don't know. I was sexually abused. But God is loving you now. 
and he will never hurt you. He will never destroy you. So today I say to you, leave the past behind for where it belongs to. And understand that your true identity is not in what happened to you in the past. Yeah, I got to say it again for someone. Your true identity is not in what happened in your past. If you're saved now, your true identity is in Christ Jesus. And that's what God is after. Allowing you to become more like Christ. So that your true identity comes out. The word of God says that the seed of God is in you. So stop worrying about yesteryear. Yesterday. Year, year, <laughs> years ago it happened. Can I tell you something? Let it be over. Today. Let God break the stuff from your life. Today, let God deliver you from your past. I hear the Spirit of the Lord says, I even come now, God says, to roll the burdens of your past away and put them where they belong. The Spirit of the Lord said, I've come in my power even now to deal with the issues of your past and bury them for you. And I want to pray. I don't want to wait today. I don't want to pray now for somebody who's still hurting because of their past. They're living in their past for things that they missed and things that missed them. And I want to declare even over you now what God is saying over you. If you want it, just stand right where you are. And I want to say to you, don't let me waste this prayer. Because God is coming for your past. Don't take it back up and walk with it. How often it happens to all of us, me. Somebody does something and it takes us right down our past. You know what I do? Because I got a past too. And do you know what's worse? The devil. When it comes, nobody loves you. You see, it's happening all over again. Look what you did. When he does that, and he tells you, look what you did way back then. Please say to him, look what God has done now. Because God does not judge your life. And I want to say to you, God does not judge your life now based on what you did then. Are you hearing me? I don't think you're hearing me. God does not judge you based on what you did then. If it's under the blood, it's under the blood, it's over. God judges you based on what he's saying to you now, based upon what his word says. Let it go. It's over. I want to declare of your life, it's over. Stop allowing the devil to tell you and to remind you. And yeah, you remember. He'll remind you. But there's some things you need to say to him. It's over. Father, Father, I pray for your people. And I declare over them today that the issues of their past are over. And the things that bind them up and surround them and remind them of their past, we declare the blood of Jesus. Because God, there's some people who are put out of their homes that are standing right now. And the rejection and fear hangs them down every day. Many of them have repeated the cycle of their past. But I declare in the name of Jesus that the fire and the power of God breaks the cycle. And I declare over it's over. I break rejection. I break fear in the name of Jesus. And I declare over your life that every 
opportunity you've missed in the past, God says over you, I bring it back. But in a different way and in a better way for you. I declare, where, where, where things went wrong in your life, now that thing is broken and things are going to flow according to God's plan for your life. I declare every missed opportunity will come back, but not as it was in the past, but as God has ordained it for your life now and for the future. In the name of Jesus, I break every fear. I break every disappointment. I break every heartache. In Jesus' name, and I declare you free from your past. Free to step into a glorious future. Free in the name of Jesus. And I speak to every principality and power that's being assigned to your life to bring about a vicious cycle. I declare in Jesus' name, it's broken over your life. And now I speak the word of heaven over you. There's a new cycle. It's a cycle of heaven, a cycle of life, a cycle of the glory of God. Circulate in your prophetic destiny, bringing to pass the things that God has spoken over you. For God says over you, you're truly blessed. And who are blessed, no man can curse. The others have cursed you in the past, but God says now that's over. It's broken. Now God says blessings come upon your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare you free from your past. But now, in Jesus' name, I declare you stepping into a glorious future. Stepping into life. Stepping into peace. Stepping into good things. Some of you got to move out your sin and begin to make a prophetic step. Like a new, a new step. Come on. A prophetic step. This is a new day for you. In the name of Jesus. This is a new season for you. In the name of Jesus. This is a new hour in your life. Some of your parents gone to the grave and you're still holding on to that. I break it now in Jesus' name. And I declare that you will allow the Holy Spirit to work in you so that full transformation can come about. Some of you Need to just breathe a, a declaration. Two things. Some of you just need to forgive your parents. Just declare it in the atmosphere. Or an uncle, or an aunt, or a teacher, or workmate, a boss. Just declare, I forgive them. You know what that does? That frees you, man. And now you got to do one more thing. Declare the atmosphere, I am free from my past. Say it again. One last time. And everybody begin to bless God together. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Transformation. So wherever you are spiritually today, whether you're a newcomer in the Lord, in the faith, whether you're a mature saint, there's much further we can go. Amen? Amen. It's much deeper we can go in God. And you can see God doing greater things in your life. You can see him transform you. You can see his, your life change as God begins, as, as God continues to process you. God is saying to you today, really and truly I've just got it started in you. And you have not seen anything yet. I've just got started, really just got, got started in your life. Can you look at somebody beside you? Let's look at them. Keep your eyes on them. And say to them, take a good look at me. You ain't seen nothing yet. Look at another person and tell them that. 
You ain't see anything yet, man. You see, the changes that God wants to make in you are good changes. It's for your better. Yet it is human, and it shouldn't be, but it's human sometimes to resist change. Even positive change, you know. I'm amazed. I'm, I'm amazed, really. Now, how in life we can adjust to change? We can adjust to upgrades. Things change in our, with our computer, upgrades come, we adjust. You have a uh, new, new, new what? Windows? We download it, or we buy it, and we flow with it. We learn the different, the new things. You got what I'm saying? Things change at work. We may not like it, but we adjust to it, and we learn the new things. But when it comes to our salvation, when it comes to this Christian life, sometimes we fight change. We fight change in the church. And who tells us that there's not to be change? We fight change in our personal lives. But God really wants to change you. So that's what I really want to talk about this week and God willing next week. Not only the process of transformation itself, but also what must come before transformation. The decision to change. Why does it matter? Because positive change is not automatic, you know. It's not a matter of God doing everything for us, but it's we cooperating with God. I ask myself the question, why, why are people reluctant to make positive change? There are a number of reasons why we resist change in our lives. Why sometimes we are reluctant. When God is at work in us, when God speaks fresh new things, <laughs> number one, I like this one. Why do we fight change? Why we, do we resist it? Why are some people reluctant to change? Number one, they just don't want to change. And I indeed. But there's some people just don't want to change. No matter how much we speak of change, how much do we read the word, no matter how desirable Change may be. Some people just don't want to change. They just resist change. Take, take resentment for, for, for an example. We may be holding resentment in our heart. God speaks about it. We hold it. We may hold unforgiveness in our heart. God speaks about it. We hold on to it. I believe when God speaks about a thing, he's telling us what to do. Get rid of it. If we have resentment or unforgiveness in our heart, and sometimes the two are so close, huh? they're twins. We have unforgiveness, or we have resentment in our heart towards someone, and, 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 and God speaks toward it. You think God is, is speaking to a man or woman of God because they just want to preach a word? He's speaking into us to do something about it. And you know that God will not come and yank that unforgiveness out of your heart. You have to will to change. But sometimes we hear a word and we hold on to the resentment because God, you don't know what they did me. God knows. You don't know how much they hurt me. God knows. And none of us in here went through more hurt than God. 
Because the same person who's holding on forgiveness and resentment, hurt and God, by just holding on to it. But God, you don't know what they said about me. And I always say, well, who are we that people can't talk about us? But you don't know what they said about me. Listen, people will always talk about you. Can we settle that? Everybody does not understand you. Everybody does not understand what you're about. And don't take up your time thinking about who talk about you. Get busy with your life, living it for God. Come on. And yet we don't understand. As we hold things like bitterness or resentment or unforgiveness, it's poisoning our system. It's poisoning our spiritual system and we carry the grudge and sometimes the other person that we hold in in our hearts don't have a clue. And there we are slowly dying spiritually and there they are living their life for God and enjoying. And the more we see them living for God and enjoying themselves, the more grudge we get. Or the more resentment builds up. And God is continuing speaking, get it out. And we continue to hold on. God speaks because he wants us to change. Can you say change? But why would people hold on? Because they think they have a right to. See, if some of us were Jesus, Peter would never be forgiven. If some of us were Jesus, he'd be back fishing for the rest of his life. Plus, we would put a curse on the Sea of Galilee that caught no fish again ever. How many of us in our prayers, we curse our brothers and sisters who say something about us? Yes, it happens. And we are cursing them. We have no right to curse our brothers and sisters. For the same covenant stands over them. You get what I'm saying? Suppose Jesus was like some of us. And he rose from the dead. He wouldn't even want to see Peter. He go, John, come, buddy. You stood, stood with me right out there and you took him, my mother, come. Not a word to Peter. Peter, come, Jesus. Suppose Jesus was like that. But you see, what, what God is after is the image of that Christ in us. Who, when somebody hurts us, we go after them. And we say, Peter, come feed my sheep. Man, I hurt you so bad. Denied you three times. Would you call him to come, come work for you? Because the first thing we say, you see, he did it once. He'll do it again. If we, if Jesus were like us, only, only uh, uh, John would have been preaching, all the others would have been cast away. So the image of Christ in us says we become like Jesus. That those who wound us, those who hurt us, we go after them. Not when they come into the service, we turn our heads. Not, not here, I'm talking about other churches. Not that we, we change our seat. Because we don't want to be close to the person we heard. That we heard that talk about us. No, no, not that we know you know. That we heard. Because we don't realize that sometimes our best friend tie up and twist up things. <laughs> Why did somebody say, you shut up, shut up, I said, me? Yes, my best friend tell me so. I said, your best friend's a big lad. <laughs> <laughs> tell them, come talk to me. You heard such and such. And now you shift your, no, I ain't doing so because I'm pointing at anybody, just, expressions okay you shift your seat because you don't want to deal with them anymore I'm not preaching to you I'm preaching to those on live stream
But you see, the image of Christ when true transformation takes place. And somebody hurts us. You know what we do? We go for them. In love. Not in resentment. Bless you. This, you didn't hurt me though. Don't worry. Bless you, Sandra. How are you doing today? And see if Sandra says nothing, God bless you. But it does not. True transformation says, this is my brother, this is my sister. And no matter how they feel about me, we are connected to the same source. And it's my duty to be my brother's keeper. Uh, you get what I'm saying? No, but, but Keith, she went and talked to Sandra. She ain't answered me. I done with that. I ain't gonna talk about that transformation. That's rolling back. You got what I'm saying? You can't done with that because the image of Christ is being formed in you. Always remember what he did with Peter. He went after him. You think it was Peter that came to Christ? Really? Yeah, he came when he saw Christ. But it was Christ that restored him. The one that was offended. And Jesus is, you see. See what you're doing me now? And I prepare breakfast on you. Sure you want some? <laughs> well, I'm poison. No, he did not say that. He prepared breakfast for all those who ran and left him. What a God. That's the kind of image that Holy Spirit is forming in us. <laughs> Some of us, whether we like it or not, are going to soon have to go and talk to those who don't talk to us because of image, not your personal image, but the image of Christ. Some of us got to go after those who hurt us and not wait for them. You know, she hurt me, so she's going to come and talk to me first. No, no, no. The image of Christ says we go after those who wrong us to restore them. That's what I call transformation. And a life that is being transformed allows the Spirit of God to place his finger on all the junk. Oh, sometimes we can carry junk. Not you, me. Sometimes we can carry junk, but you know what God is after? Getting the junk out. Just ripping it out. So that we become holy like his son. So he can have us functioning in the earth like Jesus did. So that we can have that spirit of compassion and have that love like Jesus did. Do you understand that God is after you loving on the level that Christ loved? Don't you know he's under having compassion on the level that Christ has? Don't you understand he's after having you functioning in the earth like Christ did? Transformation. So we thought it was just for, who I feel the spirit of God. No, that's part of it. But after you shake, I bet you have no issue with a shake. Some part of God hit you, have no rule. You got to. But after you shake, and you get up, and you connect with your fellow man, because transformation pushes us into practical living, that we can touch one another, that we can be there for one another. Understanding, because sometimes it seems we don't understand that the other person, we always think that the other person has challenges, not us. Because we don't see us, see? We always see the other person and want to tell the other person what they're like. But you know what? If God shows us our heart, <laughs> we get heart attack, boy. Because <laughs> we've got to remember, we're still going through the process. I might be a bit further. And because I'm a bit further, I don't criticize you who not. Huh? New Dimensions is about bringing transformation. So when I see you not there, not measuring up, I come to you in the love of Christ. And please understand, the love of Christ is not saying, I come to you in the love of Christ, and then you function out a different spirit. You get what I'm saying? We use jargon. I'm just saying this in the love of Christ. I'm anybody down to feel so condemned. 
But the love of Christ is something practical. And we are there to help one another. Transformation is a practical thing. I forgot where it was. And thank God for notes. But, but, but the Spirit of God is working in us so that what He works in us can work out of us. So people don't like to change because they don't want to change. That's where I was. Secondly, people are reluctant to change because they believe they're always right. They believe they're all right. I just alluded to that. I'm fine. You, you can imagine, how, how, when, when, whenever God begins to speak and begins to talk about things like resentment or unforgiveness, somehow we think about the other person, the person that we know, that holding uh, unforgiveness or holding resentment. We never look inward. We never say, I wonder if God is talking to me today. I wonder if there's some measure of unforgiveness in my heart. I wonder if there's some resentment in my heart toward anybody. Holy Spirit, search me. No, we always say, oh, I know about Sister Mary. I know about, I know Brother, Brother Bob. Yeah, man. Go, oh, God. Change them. But it's time for us to look inside because if we think we are all right, we're not there yet. So people who think they're all right don't want to admit that they need to change. They always think that someone else needs to. Thirdly, people are reluctant to change because they're afraid of the unknown. Let me help you with this. In Christ, there will always be the unknown. There are always places to go you've never gone before. And none of us like to, none of us likes to, to step into the unknown because the unknown looks so uncertain. But can I help you here as one who walked it? It may, it, the uncer it may, may look unknown, but it's certain if God says so. When God spoke to my heart about, about starting this ministry, I was scared because like you, I don't like, stepping into things I don't know. I was comfortable. But then I had to obey. And God said, remember Abraham? He, he, he right, reminded me of Abraham. He said, Abraham had to step to where he didn't know. But if he didn't step, if he did not step, he would have never known what he didn't know when he was in the unknown. I said that right? Okay. You will never know where you're going, but one thing you need to know, you're going there. If God tells you to shift, he knows the end from the beginning. But he does not always tell us what we're shifting to because he wants us to trust him every step of the way. Sometimes it appears that God will say, move now, but you don't know where you're moving to. But God knows because he's already prepared the way. And he does not want us to live a life where we are sure of ourselves, he wants us to be sure of him. It's all about us focusing on him, not about us. And very often we are afraid to change because we don't know what we're going to change to. But if you always remember that God can only do good in your life, you know that you're going to someplace good, even though you don't know where he's taking you to. And often, as soon as people think about change, they start playing what I call the what-if game. What if I make a mistake? What if it doesn't work out? What if people don't accept me, the new me? When we should say, God, if you say so, I'm going. I pray that the fear of the unknown will be broken from us. Because there's a lot more change coming. There's a lot more change coming to your life. And during this series, and after this series, trust me, God is going to be 
quickening his pace in our lives. He's going to be working feverishly upon us. And, 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 and what, what he did this year, maybe a bit here and a bit here, a bit there, he will be quickening his pace upon us. Get ready to change. Get ready to move faster. Get ready for the process to continue because for the length of time we've been saved, we should have been further, including me. We should have been further in God. We should have been further in change. But Holy Spirit, I ask you not to leave us in our stubbornness, provoke us, work upon us, agitate us, make our lives miserable until we change. Hey, the prayer gone down. Sorry for you. Because it's crucial in this day and age that the image of Christ be seen in this world. More and more, where the, where, where, where the church seems to be losing its power and its hold, the image of Christ needs to be seen in us. More and more, when many in the church are, are, are just swaying with what the world says and the decisions and the laws that the, the world passes, the image of Christ needs to be seen in us because when the image of Christ is formed in us, we will not be afraid or ashamed when people have to uh, uh, criticize us for the stand we take. I hear me, church. The time is coming and is upon us where the church must take a stand in this nation for some critical things, and it will cause others to, to mock us, cause others to jeer at us, call, cause others to criticize us at work, at school, wherever we go. But when the image of Christ is being formed in us, it gives us a resilience. It causes us to stand firm. The time is upon us. When the church will go through a persecution in this nation from the attacks of the mouths of men upon the church because we do not stand for what they stand for. But when the image of Christ is being formed in you, you stand for what heaven wants and not for what others want. You dig in there and you say, if God says it's wrong, I say it's wrong. But when the image of Christ is not formed in you, you are here. You know, if they want to do it, they can do it. And when you're in church, they shouldn't do it. But when you're out there with your work friends, you know, it doesn't bother me. But when the image of Christ is being formed in you, right, unrighteousness, God hates unrighteousness I hate. But yet, with that, with that uh, uh, strength in you and that hate against sin, yet there is a love for sinners. And you're able to blend your, your disapproval with the love of Christ. You got what I'm saying? So I want you to understand, it is necessary that we allow the Spirit of God to be at work in us. And let's stop being afraid of the next step and where he's taking us. He's taking us to someplace good. The church must stand up and be counted as the church and not as a people who don't know what they're about. Because the same people who want you on their side will turn around and criticize you when you go on their side. All right, then. You've got to know. You cannot be saying any longer, well, I don't know if they want to do that. No, you've got to stand on what God says. You've got to stand on the side of righteousness. You've got to stand on the side of heaven, understanding that when you take a stand for what is right, you will be criticized. You will be persecuted. But that's all right, because as you're persecuted, more of the image of Christ is being formed in you. Number four. I'm not even halfway yet. Okay, number four. Why people don't like to change is because apathy is very present in their lives. People can get into a rut. 
And even though we, 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 we know that we need to change, we're not uncomfortable enough to actually change. You get what I'm saying? We know we need to change. But we're not yet uncomfortable enough with our present state to know that we need to change because apathy has stepped in. We become lazy toward the things of God. Yeah, I know I have to, but I just don't feel like. But I declare apathy broken in our lives in the name of Jesus. And that there will be a passion and an excitement about the things of God in us. Because transformation demands a mental and spiritual conversion. I need to say it again. Transformation, hear me, this is tweetable. Transformation demands a mental and spiritual conversion. And a people that know that they need to change. So hear me again. Transformation demands a mental and spiritual conversion. You got to change. You got to convert inside. Transformation demands a mental and spiritual conversion. Number five. I'll touch on this and maybe God willing get back into it next week. Because I think I have two more. Are people reluctant to change? They don't apply the word of God to their lives. When you apply the word of God to your life, the word of God works on the inside of you. The word of God changes you. The word of God begins to deal with your life. See, the word of God is powerful enough to change our mindset. It works from the inside out. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Hebrews 4 and verse 12. You got it? For the word of God, um, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow. And the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's the word. The word of God has the power to get on the inside of us and, be, and, and, and to affect the inside of us. That's why we have to listen when a sermon is preached or when we read the word. It cannot just be a brushing through of something. We have to get it on the inside of us if it, it's to really work. Because when the word gets in upon us and gets in on our inside, there is a, there is a power and a dynamism in the word of God and it begins, to, it begins to affect us and it begins to affect change from inside out. The word what I'm preaching today is the word. If you let that word get on the inside of you, further transformation will take place. The word of God is alive. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It, it's, it's these three things. It's living, it's powerful, and it's sharp. It pierces and divides soul and spirit. So it gets deep down to everything inside of you. Even gets into the joints and marrow. And then the word of God discerns our thoughts. See, inside. It discerns the intent of the heart. There are things that you don't even know about you that the word of God will get at you. <laughs> That's why I love the word. That's why if you listen to the word, you live by the word, you read the word, you have to change. Because the word of God discerns what you, what's in your heart. Even the hidden things of your heart. No wonder the Bible says that the entrance of your word brings light. 
So the word directs. And the, the word is spirit and life. The word judges us. The word dictates to us. The psalmist said, your word have I hid where? In my head? In my inside that I might not sin against you. So as I close for today, understand that when we are resistant against the word of God, when we do not do what the word says, when we don't allow the word to get on the inside of us, there will be no transformation. In John chapter 16 and verse 13, Jesus said, however, the, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide us into all truth. Listen to me. When we come face to face with the truth, we are confronted with change. It's not a man or woman, but when the truth comes to your life, it does not confront you to change. The Spirit of God is here to guide us into all truth. Jesus said, the Word is truth. So today, the Spirit of God is confronting your life with truth. Not ideas, not ideologies, not philosophy. Truth. And when truth confronts you, it confronts your present position. It reorders your life. It dictates what needs to be done in your life so that change can come about. And when truth imparts your life, you have a decision to make. Will I stay at the same place or will I shift? I pray today you will shift. Truth. God's word is truth. Jesus said the word I speak unto you are spirit and life. So when the word gets inside of us, there's life, man. All like now, life has entered you. All like now, power has entered your life. Because the word of God is alive. Amen? It is powerful. But all like now, a two-edged sword is working. <laughs> cutting. Cutting deep. Some of you may say, ouch, but it's working for your better. When you go to sleep tonight, that same word that's released that you receive in your spirit, shoo, shoo, working on sight of you. Because you sleep, but that word will not sleep. It will continue to be alive. It will continue to be powerful in you. It will continue to go deep inside, even into your bones and marrow. That word is searching out. The word you receive today. When you sleep tonight, it will be searching out the intents of your heart. It begins to search out and it detects, ah, this is not a good area here. I place my finger upon that. And you wake in the morning and all of a sudden there's the awareness that something needs to change. Because while you were sleeping, the word was active inside of you. Drawing out things that need to come out discerning the thoughts of your heart and the intentions of your heart. Beginning to direct your life. Well, if you think when I get into work tomorrow, you see, you're thinking this in yourself. I'm going to deal with them how, they, they, how I should because they're not getting away with this as they did on Friday. And you're sleeping tonight. You said nothing to anyone, but the word picks it out. And you wake up in the morning, and there's a voice inside of you. No, don't take that action. It's wrong. It's the Word of God. And I declare that Word will continue to work inside of your life to bring about change. Please allow it to. Because a transformed life is a powerful life. Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you today. We give you praise and glory and honor. The truth of your word has confronted us today and will continue to confront our lives. Lord, I declare your word is truth. Your word is spirit. Your word is life. Your word is sharp. God, I pray your word will work upon us. 
work in us. Conforming us to your will, O oh God. Your word will process us. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God. Father, it's like we are on the potter's wheel today. And we will be next week and we will be all through the week. I pray, God, that we will submit ourselves to your process of change. Mold us. Remake us. Come more.
for this life you're calling us to. Pastor Sandra comes with the announcements and our offering. Is there anyone here who wants to receive Jesus Christ in your life? You want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Saying, I'm not walking with the Lord, I'm not serving Him. He's speaking to your life today and He's calling you into a life of transformation, a life of beauty. Today you say, I want to receive Jesus and serve him. I, 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 I want to receive him in my life to live for him. Please put your hands up and let me see it. Say today, make a decision. God's been searching out for me. Now I surrender. Any in the service. If you want to receive Jesus in your life or at one point... You were serving him, and you're not serving him any longer. You say, today I surrender my life to Jesus. Come and meet us up front. He's calling you, calling you back to him. Just come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We ask Pastor Sandra to come. You may be seated. We have some important announcements uh, to share with you. Um, this evening we have. Um, this evening we have. Um, Kingdom Arts. This evening we have the prayer room. Oh dear. Have the prayer room experience with Jay Thomas. He, he was sharing here for the last two nights um, tremendous principles concerning worship. And this evening there will be what we call the prayer room experience where we'll be worshiping and singing. Um, a little later, Shavano Ray wants to come and give you some information concerning this on behalf of Island Worship, but there's a baby to dedicate and we want the parents to kindly bring your baby. We ask you just bear with us, hold with us for a few more minutes. There's some important things that we need to do, but are the parents here? Tremaine and Mary, you're here. Come, please. Beautiful little girl, join the family, Jermaine and Mary, addition to their family, they already have a son, this is a blessing that God, I always believe that children are a blessing, we invite any others that are standing with them, if they're family or God's parents or whatever that they want to join us they can come as well so that we can bless this little girl
Hallelujah. We don't baptize children. We just believe that God has blessed us, and when he blessed us, that we say thanks. We come and we give thanks back to God for this little child. And we want to also remember that you have a part to play in their lives as you would speak, as you would be a part of this church, that you have that awesome responsibility also of speaking in and blessing this little child. I want us to just stand and as we would pray and bless her. Hallelujah. She would have a beautiful voice. Yes? Right. She's looking back at mommy and daddy. She's wondering, why is this strange person holding me? But that is okay. All right. Father, we just want to thank you for this little gift, God. Father, we acknowledge, Lord God, and we thank you for that you bless this family, this couple, God, with this little gift of life, Father. And Father, today we have come, Lord God, to give her back to you, God, saying thank you and appreciation, Father, for this gift, Father. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that the peace of God will garrison around this little child, Father. Lord, that every area of this child will develop and develop well. Father, we declare, God, Lord, that the blessings of the Father and the Holy Spirit is upon her, God. Father, I, bring, I declare, God, Lord, good health. We, co we come against any sickness, Lord God, or any disease that will come. Father, Lord God, to stop this body, Father, from developing the way that it's supposed to develop. Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus, and I break any generational sickness, Lord God. Father, Lord God, I even fears, Father, Lord God, that will govern this little child in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare, Lord God, that she is the head and, the, and not the tail, Father. Lord God, that she, Father, will know what it is, Father, to know you from an early age, Father, because it would have already started in the womb. So, Father, I pray, God, Lord, that the knowing of you, God, and Father, that when she comes to her age, Father, Lord God, at acknowledging you, she will do it in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare she's blessed. We declare she's favor. We declare that doors will be open to her, God. Father, as she goes through the different stages of education, Father, I pray that no harm will come to her. No one will speak ill, Father, Lord God, or speak curses over this life in the name of Jesus. I declare favor over her in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, uncommon favor will be hers, God. Father, I declare the peace of the Holy Spirit over this little life even now. And Father, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you'll give her parents and those that will stand around her, God, parents, Lord God, our family. Father, Lord, as she looks for examples in the earth, Father, that they will be her examples. They will be the ones, Father, Lord God, that will help her. Father, that she would look to, Father, for guidance in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, for wisdom for her parents because we understand the type of world that we live in. So, Father, we ask that they will call and they will draw on you for insight and revelation how to raise this child up in the fear of the Lord. Father, that the, root, the, the word of God will become, Father, their manual of instruction of how to train up this child. And Father, as they impart the word and the truth into her spirit, that it shall bring forth fruit in the right season. So Father, again, we thank you for her and we bless her, calling her Nala, Nala, Dion, Tatum, Rena. So many names for this little child. Whatever they are, God, Whatever they mean, Father, I pray that they truly 
will impact this little child's life. And Father, we bless her and we anoint her. We set her apart, God, to fulfill purpose and destiny in the earth, Father. Father, I declare her very breath will be one that will govern by you, God. And Father, I declare the blessings of the Father and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on. Yes. I will not torment you anymore. Please go to your mother. You know, sometimes she started to settle. And then she realized the breasts were not familiar. <laughs> and she's, she's stuck in there and she said, these breasts are not familiar. And the scent, these children know the scent of their parents. Bless you both. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's amazing here. Children know how to pick up scents. They know the smell of their mother and their father. They know you cannot fool them. And it's always a blessing to bring new ones into the family. The church is growing. Amen. That's why we have to get our nursery finished. We are bursting in there. So we need to continue our fundraising. But we just want to bless you. We welcome you, those of you who are worshiping for the first time. We want to welcome you to New Dimensions. Those that might be still on live stream, we also welcome you again. And we pray that if you don't have a church of your own, that you'll come again. But we want to acknowledge you. We want to stand. We want to welcome my cousins all the way from the UK, sitting right behind me there. Whenever they're here holidaying, they come in and they come to church. But we want to welcome those of you that are with us for the first time. You've never been with us in New Dimensions. We want you to stand so that we can pray for you, welcome you, um, greet you. This is not to embarrass you. I know some people get a little bit timid, but geez, we just want to welcome. And we always see it a privilege to pray over your life and to bless you. And, and, and to encourage you. And our partners and friends, they're coming and they're going to just shake your hands, declare the peace of God over your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stay with them because we're going to be praying for them. We're going to be blessing them. Father, we just want to thank you for these that have come to worship with us today, God. Father, you know why they're here, God, maybe holidaying, maybe just looking, Lord God, for a place, Father, to worship. Father, I pray wherever they are at today that you will meet with them, Lord God, that the blessings of the Holy Spirit will be with them. Father, if there's any sick in their bodies, Lord God, and they need a touch from you, the healing power of Jesus Christ even now we declare it over their lives right now in the name of Jesus and we're, whatever your body is going through whatever trauma whatever crisis your body is going through at this point in time we declare your healing power over their lives even now in the name of Jesus we say be healed in Jesus name Father we speak peace the covering, the protection of God over your lives, even now, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, and we welcome you. And I say again, if you don't have a church and you're looking for a church, we are here every Sunday at 8 a.m., time for a worship where we just come and we abandon ourselves and just worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We also have meet on Wednesdays, but for the month of um, August, we are not having our usual Bible study on Wednesday, but September 
we would resume our services. Also, Forerunners, there's no Forerunners this Friday. As you know, this week is the Kingdom Arts Festival, and really, we've been having some awesome time yesterday, and Friday was awesome. Awesome, and I know Shavana Ray will come. I think you better come now and give those announcements, but do not miss the prayer room this evening. 6.30 right here. You know, I am not a worship leader or thing, but I am a worshiper. And worship will be what will be in heaven forever. So it was an honor to sit and hear what Holy Spirit expect of us as worshipers. And how we are in this season, what Holy Spirit is doing and shifting even the way we worship, where we connect with heaven. And it was an awesome time, both Friday and yesterday, as we spent almost the whole day in, in the presence of God. It was more than just a seminar. It was a worship experience. And we learned how easy it is for the song that is in our hearts to come forth, to just big up our God and to just honor our God. Worship is not about anybody else. It's about you and God. We were create, created to worship him, and he just wants and wait on that worship to come forth. All right. So as everybody is talking about what has been happening so far with the Life 97.5 Kingdom Arts um, Festival, the workshop this weekend was awesome. It was really amazing. I know some of our worship team members were there and were able to receive, and I know that worship in our ministry alone will be improved because of it. Um, starting this evening is going to be our prayer room experience, and we're just inviting everybody to come out. It's free of cost, so bring everybody that you know. There is room, so just come out for an awesome time and just worship. It's gonna be led by international worship leader and songwriter, Jay Thomas. He's from the International House of Prayer in Kansas City. Uh, some of our mostly young people know him, so yeah. <laughs> just come out and you know receive from that place of prayer and worship as we just intercede on behalf of the nation. Um, then on Tuesday, we are going to have our Visual and Performing Arts Gala. That's going to be held at the Errol Barrow um, Center for Creative Imagination. And we have some of our uh, partners who are going to be involved in it. We have Daniel Thorpe, uh, Denisha Brathwaite. <laughs> we have Liana Hallett. Come out and support the artists. Come out and support the performing artists. And just, you know, support kingdom people. Uh, the tickets are $25 or $30 at the door. Uh, then on Thursday, we're going to be having our fashion event. This is going to be Kingdom Fashion with our very own Sheldine Brathwit showcasing some of her pieces from Charmaine's Couture. So come out and um, support Sheldine as well then. On Friday, we're going to be having our culinary night, which is going to be a lot of fun. All my foodies can come out and just... <laughs> kind of experience um, all the different kingdom culinary artists that we have here because we can express kingdom in all kinds of different ways. Uh, we have Kimar Safri who's going to be a part of the cooking competition and some of you may be familiar with him. Tickets for that are $20. Uh, then on uh, Saturday we're going to be having the Glow Worship right here again be sure to get your glow worship t-shirts they're going to be 25 dollars. you can actually sign up i think today is the last day for you to sign up for the t-shirts they're 25 dollars. we're going to have our table outside so you can see us to get any tickets for any of these events thanks and i hope to see you guys there amen amen this is our festival this is our christian festival and we need to support our own it's amazing that sometimes I look on Facebook and I see some of our Christian persons talking about going to the tents. Yeah. On Facebook. So this is our Christian 
festival and we need to support our Christian festival, okay? We need to support our own and we have some of our partners that are a part of this festival um, cooking. We have our own um, Brenda Lee's. Um, she would be doing her part in cooking. We have Sheldon, and they all did a fantastic job. The last time when I went to them, it was, it was a good experience. And it's, it's not just um, the cooking and all of that, but it's the presence of God that is felt through the different artistic expressions. You see the, the paintings, Danielle and all of them that do some lovely paintings. You see the whole expression of God coming out. And it's good to be a part of this festival and to be out there supporting our own. The world support their own. The Christians are supposed to support their own. New Believers class commence on um, Tuesday. Not this Tuesday, next Tuesday the 25th of August, right in our um, transformation office, the administration building at 5.30. So all those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, or you were from the last class, you came in midway in the class, we are, um, you have to come back to finish the class. So please be back there. And I want to encourage the disciplers as well to come with the new believers because sometimes they're a little bit timid and you can be an encouragement to come out to the class and sit with them until they get settled. Okay? All, we are also um, accepting um, you filling out partnership forms. All those who want to be a part of this church, first you have to be at least in coming to the church at least three months um, or you're saved, baptized in water, you can apply for partnership and you, know, you can get one of those forms from any of the hostesses this morning. Please hurry up. Do not wait to the last minute because we close off our application forms and already we are interviewing um, the, those that want to be a part of the church. At this time, we'll have our dollar drive. And for those that are visiting, what is our dollar drive? This is uh, another way of us raising um, funds to continue our building, to continue to finish the nursery. Um, so the dollars, only silver dollars, go into this container. And then any other coins or any other dollars or coins go into the basket. This is not the normal offering. We'll have our normal offering after. So this is just our fundraising effort. So you can come. The band will play some something. Oh, song team would do something for us. Mm -hmm. 